From seeing my full potential that you see I remember when I felt your love was not enough Praise the Lord. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson. Welcome to another dynamic broadcast of Jesus is the Answer. Amen. I'm Bishop Ernest Johnson. I pastor the Jesus is the Answer Apostolic Church and World Television Center in Los Angeles, California. And we're located, amen, there in uh, the, the area of Compton, uh, between Compton, Willowbrook, Watts. We're right there in that area. Amen. And we're here to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we're located, we have locations all over the country. Amen. We're here to lift up the name of Jesus. And our goal is to be fishers of men and to win souls at any cost. Amen. Because Jesus is soon to come back. You can feel it in the air. You can feel the intensity. You can feel what's happening at the border, the wars across the country. Amen. The terrorists that are doing things inside of America. People are stabbing folks. People are killing folks. Murders at, at a high rate. Amen. Sicknesses and diseases are out of control. Amen. And Jesus said these things would take place before his coming. Amen. And so we as the people of God, have to get ready, get ready, get ready. Amen. Because Jesus is getting ready to come back. The question is, are you ready? Are you ready? Now, I want to ask you uh, this important question. Are you pleasing God or are you pleasing man? The question is, are you pleasing God or are you pleasing man? Okay. So we're going to answer that question right now. And we're going to find out by the word of God. We got to find out whether we're pleasing God or whether we're pleasing man. And if we're we're not pleasing God and we are we are pleasing man, then we cannot please God. Amen. We cannot please him and we're going to find out which one are we pleasing? Are we pleasing God or are we pleasing man? Amen. We're going to find that out right now. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your mercy, your grace, your kindness. We thank you for your infinite love. Father, we ask you, Lord, just to have your way under the umption, the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, Father, and help us, Lord, to please you with everything in us. Let us be like Enoch. Let us have the testimony that we pleased God. And Father, we want to say thank you. We praise you. We honor you right now. Send your word under the umption, the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you. We're going to go to this important break. And when we come back, we're going to look at, are we pleasing God or are we pleasing man? Amen. And if we're pleasing man, we're going to be in trouble. But we have to please God. Okay? Let's go to this break and we'll be right back. Right after this. If you have been blessed by the ministry of Jitta TV and Bishop Johnson, we would love to hear from you. For prayer requests and donations, please visit us online at www.jittatv.org or call our prayer counsellors who are standing by to take your prayer request and donations 24-7 at 310-637-7086. Thanks in advance for your prayers and financial support as we continue to change lives around the world through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Welcome back to the broadcast. Again, my name is Bishop Ernest Johnson, and I want to welcome you to the broadcast of Jesus is the Answer right here on the GitaTV.org television network, family television with power. Amen. And we're not talking about physical force power like in the boxing ring. We're talking about Holy Ghost power, the greatest power on this earth. 
that's able to hold back countries and hold back wars and, and the power that's able to stop you from an early death, the power that's able to heal your body when the doctors have given up on you and say there's no more time left for you, the power to change your life, a man from a murderer to a life giver, a person that witnesses to somebody so they can get eternal life, to go from an abusive husband to a lover. Oh my God, Jesus is able to transform your life if you just give him the opportunity. Amen. He can save you from being a pervert, amen, to being a, a decent human being. God can save you, amen, from uh, your, your, your lifestyle, your perverted lifestyles. He can save you, amen, and turn your life around if you just give him the opportunity. Amen. Even if you don't have any purpose, if you don't have purpose in your life, Jesus is able to come into your life and bring you purpose. And we talked about in one of the lessons, I talked about how Jesus called the disciples, how he called Peter and Andrew, his brother. And he said, come and follow me. I will make you fishers of the men. At that point, they had no other purpose in life but to go fishing every day on their big boats and their companies and get tons of fish, pack them, take them to the market and sell them. And come back and buy more boats and pay for their bills and do all that. That's a boring life. If your whole life is to go to college, get a good job. Okay, now you're 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 buying all this stuff. You got a, you got Teslas, you got uh, uh, Mercedes, you got uh, bodegas, you got all of this stuff. Amen. And and then I'll say like, um, you know, they talk about the, the girls that's in concerts, the most highest selling girl right now. I forget her name, but she goes and she uh, uh, does concerts and the Hilton girls and, 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 and that life or that stuff becomes boring after a while. It becomes the same old pattern. But where is true purpose? Where is true purpose in your life to do something, to leave a mark in this world? Not just a mark in music, amen, because that benefits her. Uh, everything that Paris Hilton does, it benefits her. Everything, uh, what's, uh, I'm going to ask my camera, what's this girl's name? Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Amen. Taylor Swift is the biggest thing happening right now in our generation, but she's entertaining you. But that's for her. The more she entertains you, the more you buy her records. The more she entertains you, the more she sells out concerts. And what is she becoming? A multi-billionaire. And who is that going to benefit? Not you, her. Amen. Most of the people that are doing things in this world are doing things to better themselves, get themselves ahead. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? But when you preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, or when Jesus came, Jesus' whole purpose was to seek and save that which is lost. And the Bible said that when he was born, we just got through celebrating, amen, his birth. But when he was born, his whole purpose, uh, when the angel talked to Joseph and said, uh, don't, don't put away, don't put away Mary because that that's in her is of the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost. That that's in her is of the Holy Ghost. So don't put her away. Amen. But take unto thee Mary thy wife, for she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, and he shall save his people from their sin. So the angel in the dream spoke to him and gave him Jesus' name, which is, which is his identification. Your name is given to you for, to identify you. Your name and your social security numbers are given for you to be identified. So the name of Jesus was not given by Mary. It was not given by Joseph, his stepfather. It was given by God. The name Jesus comes from God. And so, so many people are trying to take away from the name of Jesus by uh, bringing up all these other gods and these foreign gods and all this different stuff. Amen. But the scripture says... There's no other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved, and that is the name of Jesus Christ. You cannot be saved without the name of Jesus. I know you said, well, I'm going to call on Yahshua, I'm going to call on Buddha, I'm going to call on Allah, I'm going to call on all these other people, but there's only one name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved, and that is the name of Jesus. And Jesus is the very God manifested in the flesh 
to die so that we might be saved. Because the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So when Jesus comes or the purpose of Jesus to come, his purpose was to change you, to bless you, to put you on the right track, to save you from your sin. And somebody says, well, well, what, how do you know that I'm in sin? What, what makes you think that what I'm doing is in sin? Well, if it's outside of this word, it is sin. Amen. And the Bible says all disobedience is sin. Amen. The Bible says all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. Amen. These are things that God did not create us to do. Amen. Satan comes along and he gets us wrapped up in this crazy music because he was the most gifted cherub in heaven. He was the gifted one. He was the one with the arts, the arts gift, the talents, the singing, the, the, the acting, the, the, the pretending, the music, all these other things to do what? misguide mankind away from God's law. Amen. But the Bible says, Jesus said, my word is settled in heaven and his earth, and it's not going to be changed for anybody or anybody's body. God did not change his word. His word still stands. It's still the same. Amen. And that's what that's what's going to save you, and that's what's going to keep you. So he came to redeem man, redeem fallen man. Who has learned to live without Christ. Who has learned to live without his principles. Who has learned to live without his morals. You can have any kind of morals you want. I remember I had an English teacher. And amen. I was my, my first year of years of college. And I was working on all my general educations. Amen. And my English teacher said, I think that everybody in the world should have their own philosophy, their own thoughts, and, 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 and the like. And I put my hand up. I said, hold on, uh, uh, Miss, uh, uh, Miss Teacher. She was a lady. I said, if everybody has their own doctrine, everybody has their own law, everybody has their own thoughts, then there's no common denominator for us to come together and meet together and agree, amen, in order to survive and get along. Ain't that what Rodney King say? Can we all just get along? Well, how are we going to get along if we don't understand a middle ground to get along? So if you have a, a principle that you like yellow and I have a principle that I like blue or green or pink or whatever, and you come up in a yellow car, well, you breaking my you breaking my rules. And then I'm breaking your rules because I like to eat fish and you only like to eat chicken. Are oh, you understand where I'm coming from? Oh, bless God. So we have to have laws and God gave us his word. He gave the Ten Commandments to Moses so that the people would have guidance and they would have a, a pattern or they would have his law in order to, to live by. Amen. And so when we get outside of his word, then we are, it's sin because it's a violation of his law. It's a violation and he's God. He's the one that has set the word of God. So when you go against his word, oh my shot, da, 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 see, what did Paul say? Paul said, though I or an angel from heaven come preaching any other gospel unto you other than that which we have received, let them be a curse. And he said it twice. He said, if I or an angel, first of all, angels don't preach the gospel. Angels don't preach the gospel. Demons lie, but angels do not preach the gospel. Can angels quote scripture? Sure they can. But when Jesus, when, when Jesus knocked Paul down on the road to Damascus, Paul asked two questions. He said, number one, who are you? So the first thing you have to understand is who is God? And Jesus replied, I am Jesus whom you persecute. What? I'm persecuting Jesus? I uh, yeah, I was against Jesus because I thought I was helping God. That's when you separate God from Jesus, okay? When you separate, oh, that's a, do you know that's a revelation that just came out of my mouth that the Holy Ghost, it wasn't me, it was the Holy Ghost that just said, that's where we have all these confusions with these different religions because we separate God from Jesus. And they're all one. Behold, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God. But when we separate God from Jesus, then now we have to figure out, 
Okay, so who is your God? Your God could be Allah. Your God could be Buddha. Your God could be a, a lettuce or cabbage head. Your God could be uh, the golden calf. Amen. When you separate Jesus from God, Jesus is the very God. Jesus is the propitiation, the middle ground. He is the middle representative from God, sent from God, amen, to bring man, come in the flesh, to redeem man from sin and from the lies of the pit of hell. So when you separate God from Jesus, that's what... mm, and then you make up all these other gods and you make up these all religions. You cannot separate God from Jesus because Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. In John 1.1, 1, 1, the Bible says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. And then 1.14, and the word, which was God, was made manifest and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Oh, come on now. Amen. You cannot separate God from Jesus. That's why you have all these false prophets. That's why you made prophets. Uh, I, I ain't never seen, I, I grew up in the, in the Catholic Church, and I'm not knocking the Catholic Church, but they got all these saints. Saint Amelia, Saint Philip, Saint this, Saint that, Saint this, Saint, 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 Saint. Can I get a witness? All these are saints that they honor above God. But God said, I will have no other gods before me. And he said, and I will not share my glory with another. Amen. You cannot take away from God's glory by moving Jesus and separating him from God. Because they are one. When Philip said, Lord, amen, and, and I think it's believing in St. John chapter 14, Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. The word suffices means it'll satisfy us, and we'll be cool with all this conversation. And Jesus said, have I been with you so long, Philip, and yet hast thou not known me? What are you saying, Jesus? I am the Father. I am the father in creation. If you read St. John chapter 1, amen, you read verses 1 and 2, and it goes on to say, by him were all things made, and without him was nothing made. In the beginning, the Bible says God created the heavens and the earth, but when he came to man, he said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. Well, God doesn't have an image because he's a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So where where did God get an image from? In his mind, Jesus was the blueprint of the human being. Jesus Christ was the pattern, was the blueprint of the human body. Can I get a witness here? Jesus was the blueprint. Jesus was the pattern that man was made after. Jesus, God created Jesus. That's why he said, behold, lo, I come in the volume of the book to do thy will, O God. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when Jesus came, he came in the image and likeness of God. John 1, 1, and the Bible says, by him were all things made, without him was nothing made. And then the second thing, that we know that he's the son of God. We know that he's the son of man. Amen. While he walked around here, we accept that he was the son of God, the son of man. But many of you have reduced Jesus to just another prophet. But there is no other prophet. No other prophet that I know that said, you tear this temple down and in three days, I'm going to build it back up. Oh, glory to God. Jesus was the only one that declared, if you bury me in three days, I'm going to get back up. And guess what? On the third day, he rose again. And to prove that he was risen, he went and got everybody else out the grave, all the old patriarchs, the prophets, and say, come on, y'all, get up out them graves. Let's go hang out for 40 days to give infallible proof that not only am I risen from the grave, but I am the resurrection, the truth, and the life. And no man comes unto the Father but by me. So, Philip, if you have known me from this point, If you know me, you know the Father. So we know that Jesus is the Father. We know that he's the Son. They call him the Son of Man. They call him the Son of God. And then in in, uh, St. John chapter uh, 14, uh, he talks about, he said, if you obey me, then the Father will send you a comforter two chapters later. 
Somebody say progressive revelation. Progressive. Two chapters later, he said, and obey my commandments and I will send the Holy Ghost to you. What is he telling you? Two chapters later, he's giving you the revelation of who I am. I am God manifested in the flesh. The last thing, and so Jesus said, if I go not, when it comes to the Holy Ghost, he said, if I go not away, the comforter will not come. Why? Why? Is Jesus here to hinder the comforter? Is Jesus here to hold up the Holy Ghost? Is what Was his presence here holding up the move of the Spirit of God? No. But what it was, he had to go back to his glorified state and pour out his spirit upon all flesh. He said in that day, according, amen, to the prophet uh, jo Joel, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. And upon my servants and upon my handmaids shall I pour out of my spirit and they shall prophesy. And prophesy means to preach under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I want you to think about something else. I want you to think about it. I'm going to get back to this. Are we obeying God or are we, are we pleasing God or are we pleasing man? Are we, and, and when we please man, we're pleasing us. Amen. Because we want the presence and we want the honor of man. Amen. Because when you start pleasing, pleasing God, uh, there's going to be some persecution and there's going to be some suffering. Like last week, I, I was talking about Jesus paying tribute and Jesus said, if we don't want to make a man, we got to pay our bills. Amen. We don't want to make folks mad. We, 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 have, we have to pay the bills. Uh, Y'all understand where I'm coming from? So the thing I'm saying to you, amen, saints of God, is that Jesus wants us to please him. Not be a man pleaser, but please him. And I'm, I'm, when I leave this text today, I'm going to give you something so deep, it's going to make you realize whether you're pleasing God or whether you're pleasing man. Okay? So, so here Jesus, uh, you know, he told him about the tribute. And he said, we got to pay these so we don't make folks mad. <laughs> so here uh, in the book of Thessalonians, uh, we're in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, amen, chapter 2 and verse number 4. Uh, let's, let's read that and I want to show you something. Amen. Uh, let me put my glasses on because I can't see without them. Okay. Well, yes, I can. I'm healed in Jesus' name, right? Uh, 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2 uh, and verse number 4. When you have it. So I'm going to start here. It says, for yourselves, brethren, know our entrance in unto you, that it was not in vain. Okay. But even after we had suffered before, after we had, uh, it says that we're not in vain. But even after we had suffered before, we were shamefully treated and were uh, shamefully treated. And ye know, and at Philippi, we were bold in our God, we were bold in our God to speak, un, to speak unto you the gospel. So even though we suffered, we spoke the gospel. Amen. And uh, unto you of the gospel of God, which much contention. People say, when you preach in the truth, there's no contention. Oh, yes, it is. Because the Bible says that you think I come to send peace. This is what Jesus said. You said you think I come to send peace. And it comes to peace, but a sword. He said, a mother shall be against a daughter, and a father shall be against his son, and a man's foes shall be they of her own household. Why? Because they're preaching the gospel, and everybody does not respond to the truth the same way. Some people are going to hate you for the truth. Some people are going to love you for the truth. The ones that hate you will gnash upon you with their teeth and tell you they don't want to hear it. The ones that love you are going to what? Gladly receive your word. And they're going to go to church with you. They're going to get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And they're going to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So when you don't please man, man will be mad at you. Because everybody wants things to go their way. But when you preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and you do what God says do, everybody's not going to be happy. But the ones that are happy are going to follow you to the water. Isn't that great to know? Amen. And it's funny that some of the people you love the most, like your family, may not be the ones that follow you to the water. Amen. Because the scripture says this. There's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Amen. So right here, uh, we're going to a few more minutes. For our exhortation was not of deceit. Okay. 
nor of uncleanness, nor in guile. But we, as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel. So God trusted us with the gospel, not to contaminate it according to verse number three. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God who testeth our hearts. Okay? For neither at any time use we flattering words, as ye, uh, as ye know, nor a cloak of covetousness. We didn't preach to get from you, and God is our witness. Nor of men sought we glory, neither do we seek glory. Hey, kabosh, and da 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 I'm not seeking glory or title of you, nor yet of others when he might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherished her children. I'm going to stop right there. What is he saying? We preach the gospel with much contention. Why? Because don't nobody want to hear the truth of the gospel. Okay? I, I, I know our time is, is a little bit over, but i got to share this one verse with you. Amen. That Jesus said these words in Matthew 10, 37. This is how you know whether you please in God or whether you please a man. Jesus said, uh, the Bible says, verse number 36, and a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Amen. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that finds his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. I will be able to explain that later on and get more into depth, depth and detail. But what God is saying is that when it comes to men pleasers, you cannot put yourself you cannot put your mama, your daddy, your cousin, your auntie. You cannot put your lands. You cannot put your money. You cannot put your business in front of God. Amen. Because if so, you will end up pleasing those things. And you cannot please God and money. Think about what I'm saying. Money gives you pleasure. Money gives you power. Money gives you ability to do things. But now God is calling you to give up those rights. Not give up money and be broke. But don't allow, let money be your tool and not you be its servant. Amen. Shall we serve God or shall we serve man? What are you going to do? Amen. What are you going to do? You don't want to get to the kingdom of God and you talk about, I did all this great stuff for you. And he said, you didn't do it for me. You did it for you. When you pay your tithes, why do you pay your tithes? Well, because I want a blessing. You're doing it for the wrong reason. You have to do it out of obedience. I'm going to do it just because God said to pay my tithes. I'm going to give to the kingdom of God because God tells me to give. And he said, give and it shall be given unto me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over shall men give into my bosom. I'm not giving to gain or to get. I'm giving to build the kingdom so men and women can be saved from their sin. So give today. Amen. As you are blessed with this ministry. And don't forget to get my book. I'm a faithful tither 